in my environment here, and this is something you will set up this week. I have downloaded, let me see, let me go to this one. Here I have a few driver packages, some from Windows 10, some from Windows 11. First of all, I did not create these packages. I opened up a PowerShell script on the community. It's been around for four or five years. I selected the models that I had and run the tool to create the packages. But if you don't like PowerShell, by all means, you can go ahead and create packages manually. Just a regular package. What's beautiful about these packages, if I go to the data source on one of these, It's actually a WIM file. But that WIM file, if I open it in 7-zip, contains all, you know, the usual audio, video, and drivers. But look about the size here. Which one do you think is faster to download? A compressed WIM file that is 700 some megs, or a thousand small files that is over two gig in size. Obviously the first one, yes. And especially if you guys are using a PKI environment where you're doing HTTPS downloads, where basically each and every file access is a little bit of a security discussion between the client and the server, it can take 20 minutes getting down an uncompressed package versus a single web file. And for the last three, four years, we see organizations doing this, yes, not for drivers, but for applications too. Here is one of my, my favorite apps, 3D Studio Max. I used to work as a 3D animator during my college time it was a side gig, but I, I, I liked it. 3D Studio Max, the DOS version, of course, at the time, but that application is uh, it's not very big, per se. It's only 4 gigs, but it's almost 18,000 files versus a 1.6 gig single file. And even more interesting, companies that is using the cloud management gateway to support devices that are on internet only with Config Manager, you are paying for download. You're paying for the egress cost. I just saved that company two thirds of their cost by not only making it faster, but also smaller. Sidebar, but this is this is a big deal. So we have the package, and then the sequence that I showed you. I have added in a, a PowerShell script from the community. That automatically figures out which package to download for a given model that I'm deploying to. I don't have to edit anything in the sequence. And I use the same technique for bare metal deployment. So I'm using the same driver packages. Next step is um, in-place upgrades. And as you learned yesterday, when you have a config manual environment, you can add in images because you did that yesterday. But you can also add in upgrade packages. So what's the difference between an upgrade package and an image? Well, let's take a look in the file system. 
sources OSD OS. Here I have an image. It's just the WIM file. An upgrade package is the entire ISO, or at least the WIM file together with the setup files. But this is the content of the ISO file. So that's the difference. Because when you run an upgrade, you're actually running setup. When you are deploying an image, you do not run setup. It just applies that image to the hard drive during deployment. But this one is actually driving setup. So after adding an image here, you simply add and you point it to the folder where you have it. Then you can go ahead and create upgrade sequences from here. Because one of the options is indeed to say, I would like to upgrade an OS from an upgrade package. So a very similar process to what you did yesterday, the wizard just looks a little bit different and it would ask for different things. But after you run through that wizard, you will have an upgrade sequence. For example, like this. This is coming straight from Config Manager. And then, uh, because this template is not very good as is, you have to improve it. So this is pretty much what we'll be spending the day on. Making sure we can get one sequence functional first, and then spending the time making it better. Forgot which day I showed it, but I show one of my production sequences. Um, I uh, believe it was this one here that I showed where I had a, a happiness section where the sequence will jump to if everything is good. And I still decided to copy the log files even if it was successful. And I also have a, a not so happy section where I definitely copy the log files uh, because I want to know when, what they are, you know. If something goes wrong, I'll be able to troubleshoot them. So in my lab environment, uh, when I have deployments that are either successful or, or failing, that will be uh, log files uploaded to the server. And of course, I can go ahead and I pick one of these and I can review the log file uh, that was in it. It's easy to access them this way compared to trying to find them on a client especially if that client is not in front of you, say you're deploying or someone else is deploying a few devices in a different location. You were at the headquarters, they are in the branch office. It makes it so much easier to troubleshoot uh, when they are on the service side. Uh, there are other things that you can make or add to your sequence to make them a little more resilient. Uh, there are some variables that you can put in. If this one will increase the timeout if an error happens. So you can actually see it. The default timeout is only 15 minutes. So if you start the deployment and it fails and you don't happen to be there looking at it, you may miss that it failed, uh, which is a bit annoying. Uh, here I've added in a retry count and a retry delay. Should the sequence have trouble downloading a package? These variables, and I, I shared a resource with you, I believe it was yesterday, it might have been Tuesday, uh, a link to all the variables that Config Manager supports for the sequence. But in, in my opinion, if a sequence cannot download a package the first time, I kind of want it to retry. Uh, give it another go, because it could be just a temporary network hic uh, or something, and a, a hiccup or something. So I like to put them in. On Monday, you <clears throat> learned about uh, having an image strategy and how to uh, create a thin image based on the Microsoft default media. 
but there are plenty of organizations out there and, and yours seem to be one of them uh, that still uses uh, what's called a reference image, meaning you have something, you make changes to it. Uh, you may include an application or two um, with it. And that is usually for speeding up deployment time and uh, also to support applications that could be very complex to install automatically, but you can do it manually one time, you can capture that installation and then deploy the resulting image. Um, as you learned on Monday, that particular strategy is uh, it's not going to go away completely, but it's being reduced in numbers. Um, organizations, as we learned it earlier this week, they, they are <clears throat> more likely to use thin images and rather do some basic maintenance to them. However, in if you do need a thick image, if you do need to have an image with applications, I recommend that that too should be an automated build. So basically it goes back to embracing uh, see if I can change the keyboard here. Uh, embracing automation. And if you look at your server that we've been using here throughout the week, there is a server that you haven't used yet, but will use. And that is this server over here, uh, MDT01. If a company today wants to build a reference image for Config Manager, I recommend not to use Config Manager for it. I recommend to use the MDT Light Touch deployment solution. Even though that one is no longer developed, even though it not officially support Windows 11, I still recommend using it. Because an MDT Light Touch server also has a task sequence. Windows 11, Windows 10, Windows Server. You also add in images. You can add in applications, whatever app you want to have. But if you look in one of these sequences, take my Windows 11 here. This is a sequence that will install Windows. It will install any applications that you might have or want to have in it. And it will automatically run sysprep and capture that installation to a web file. So long story short, <clears throat> you start off with the win, uh, start a VM, pick a sequence, and half an hour later, you have a way of on the server. And you already know how to take the web file that you have created and deploy it with Config Manager. Because that's exactly what you did earlier this week. The only difference is that you used an image without any applications earlier this week. Next, that if, of course, that support for an image that does have applications in it. That, that's the only reason. 